Hello, Beating Entrepreneurs. So our guest today is Jesse Hayes from Skinforia Facial Bar and Acne Clinic. So it's a brick and mortar uh, location, but she has so much experience uh, even before she started her brick and mortar store um, from from creating her her blog, building that up, and all the homework that she's she's done to even prep and get ready for that for for that brick and mortar and then also from that point on for the next three to four years and she talks about even going further out into the future of what her plans are in growing the business so there's a ton of golden nuggets and bars uh in this episode if you want to learn more about the little details of what she did you know so by the end of the episode you should have a really good idea of what is necessary to start a, a skincare or a beauty business, both online and offline in a brick and mortar store. So you definitely don't want to miss this episode. So stay tuned. Welcome to the business of beauty, where we help beauty entrepreneurs in building their business and reaching their dreams. This is your host, David Lee. Her name is Jesse Hayes at Skinforia Facial Bar and Acne Clinic. Welcome and thank you for being on the show. Hey, thank you for having me, David. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Hey, um, so let's let's start with the right 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 from the centerpiece, right? Skinforia. Tell, so elevator pitch time, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is Skinforia? Yep. So it's a facial bar. We're a facial bar and acne clinic. We're located in rural Oak and it's an actual bar setting. So you sit at a bar, the seats recline back. We play music. So no spa music. We play movies and you get your $59 treatment right there at the bar. So it's for the person that's on the go. You want to be in and out. You don't want to make an appointment and you want to be able to see a difference with your skin. Nice. nice. So do, do clients normally come in on a uh, you know, monthly, weekly, daily basis? Like what is the routine like? Yeah. So most of the clients come monthly. We have a VIP monthly membership program. So most come monthly. We do have some clients that come every two weeks, especially with our acne boot camp. So they'll mm -hmm. come every two weeks for 90 days and then move to monthly. So it's just different. Depends on the client, um, their goals and when they want to be able to accomplish those goals, like what deadline they have. Okay. Now yeah. your your client, like who's your typical clientele? Oh, it's different. So right now, mostly we have women from what twenty eight to about fifty five people a lot who have never had acne before. So most are dealing with breakouts. Um, most are dealing with dark spots, and then we also have clients who are dealing with you know fine lines and aging and things like that. Um, we do take also a lot of teenagers. So teenagers mostly in high school, and then some who have graduated and went to college who's dealing with issues with their skin and they want help. They're pretty much tired. You know, they're fed up. They've yeah. been colleges they've been on medications and they just want something different ah okay yeah nice yeah. nice now uh how long has the ha, has skinforia been been around skinforia so we've had the brick and mortar for about three and a half years and then okay. before we did the brick and mortar we had a website it was like a blog where okay. we did you know, videos um tutorials everything about skincare and sold products online so that was on for about a year year and a half before the brick and mortar opened Hmm. Okay. So I know we talked a little bit offline. So tell us a little bit more, like, why did you start the blog? Why did you do all the videos? Right. And what were the outcome of that? Right. Yeah, really just to get the name known. So I wanted to be looked at as the expert, the person that can answer your questions um, yeah. and not just come out and people say, what is for you? I've never heard of it. So <laughs> it's pretty much being able to have you go online and be able to ask questions and be able to seek some type of expert advice. And then us just getting in a routine of being able to know what clients wanted, um, knowing how to ship products and how to answer the right questions. Love it. Love it. Now, um, it, uh, let's let's actually go back in time before you started the blog. Yeah, okay. did, what what did you did you you know were you already in the skincare or beauty industry? No, what no, were you doing before no, that? I was a financial and credit counselor. So mm -hmm. uh, and then also housing, and then I help people with bankruptcy. So if you were losing a house, you were buying a <laughs> house, or yeah. people filed bankruptcy and needed help with repaying your credit, I did that. So I did that for about oh almost eight years. Eight years. Okay, so what made you shift gears? I mean, this is a big shift, right? From financial, pretty much financial, like uh, you know, advising, right, a consulting to to skincare, yeah. right, beauty. Um, 
huge shift. I just knew I always wanted to be an entrepreneur and own my own business. And I'm like, yeah. what can I do that I love? And I love yeah. the spa industry. I love going to the spa. So yeah. I said, um, let me go to school for aesthetics. I didn't love skin. I said, let me go to school for aesthetics because now I can help my staff um, and train and be able to answer the right questions. And when I went to school for aesthetics, I fell in love. Fell in love. And then I said, instead of doing a big spa, I want to concentrate just on skincare and helping people with their skin. And that's where I fell in love with skin. Ah, so so then at that point, you started the blog. Now you mentioned you, you also tried uh you know uh selling products too online right through yeah, your, so through your blog, blog through the same website yeah so we started the blog and did products online but while i was doing that i said let me work for other people in the industry mm -hmm. you know yeah. let me go ahead and try to learn from them learn from their mistakes and then make sure this is the right avenue and the right thing that i want to do so i wrote out a yeah. list of all the jobs i will work at how long i will work yeah. there and what the takeaways were and what i needed to learn before I went on to the next thing, just to make sure Skinforia was the right thing for me to do. So yeah. while I was doing that, I also did the blog. And when I did all that, I said, okay, now I'm ready to go. It's time to open Skinforia. So wow. Yeah. So you definitely put in your homework, right? It was about 10 years in the making before we even started Skinforia of just going to school and then working for others and trying to make sure I did the right training and getting the business plan together and all of that. Yeah, that's that's really good to know because, uh, you know, I hear a lot of people that are thinking about starting a business. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, you just one day you wake up, you want to start a business and boom, there's your brick and mortar. Right. And, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah, I saw people failing and I was trying to figure out why are so many people opening their business, but then closing. So that was a thing. Mm -hmm. Let me learn from their mistakes before I even, you know, start mm -hmm. anything. So. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you went, you went through a few avenues of education, right? You went through the traditional, you know, getting certified, you know, going to, going to class. Right. And yeah. then, uh, you started creating content, right? So you did a lot of research, uh, now with your, with your understanding, you're creating that content, you're answering questions. So you're teaching others, exactly. right? You're creating videos, right? Yeah. What else, what else uh, did you do to, you know, to help with the research, help with your own education to kind of build oh. your business? So one, a lot of it was also traveling. So I said, let me not just go to all the spas here in Metro Detroit, but let me travel. <laughs> hey, that's a great, a great homework there. Let me travel out of state, out the country. And every time I went somewhere, I went to a spa just to see how nice. are they, doing, what do I love? What do I not like? And what can I bring different to Metro yeah. Detroit? And then a lot of my learning was just working from other people, how to, you know, hire, how to train, how to do marketing. Yeah, and it was all about just the um, on job experience. So Okay. Any so since since you did a little bit of traveling, any any particular places that really stuck out, any spa experiences that really stuck out? And you're like, man, I I should in, in, incorporate that into my business or or like that kind of changed the way you looked at building your business. Um a lot of it was um Oh gosh, West Coast, like around California, every corner it was a spa. Um, <laughs> wow. The bars and the um, beauty bars uh, before it even started in Michigan. And yeah. then I went to these when I went to Italy. I the, the the experience is all about the customer experience and the music and um, yeah. just being able to walk in there, you know, the aromatherapy and all of that. I just wanted to make sure I brought all that back. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Italy, California, any other countries? Uh, uh, yeah. Everything else was just different states. And then every time I went on a cruise, so even being on a cruise ship, they had a spa. And yeah. you think you have to have something big. But then when I went on a cruise ship, I said, all oh, these cabins are so small, but everything was perfect. And it reminded me and let me know that you don't have to have something big in this huge spa and, and large rooms to be able to create that experience. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I remember when I uh, went to a spa with my wife, uh, and uh, just, I think it was to celebrate our, I don't know, it was like a three or four year anniversary. It was out in okay. Vegas. And uh, I think it was so comfortable, I fell asleep. Oh, <laughs> it was kind of scoring. oh yeah. you know, it's a great place when we do that. So, yeah, I love the spas in Vegas. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah all over. Um, so now, 
what what would you so what would you what would you say for a young you know or not even young but a new entrepreneur right beauty entrepreneur thinking about getting into the business um what would what would you say to them what advice would you give you know what like what i did i would say be humble and try to work for someone first before you jump in even if it's for a yeah. short period of time everybody yeah. always says you hear these stories i quit my job and then i just opened something <laughs> up I, I would advise against that because you hear about them opening but you don't hear about all the trials and the things that they went through and all the people that closed so if yeah. it's something you're thinking about doing, I just recommend whether it's something small, large, go and work under someone. Sometimes you might even do things for free or just intern under somebody just to make sure that's something you want to do. Um, okay. Because you don't know once you're going to even get be, become profitable. You don't know if it's going to be a year, five years. You yeah. don't know how it's going to be. And you want to make sure you're in there for the long run. Nice. So I guess what, what should they do? They should like have the resume ready, start going to every spot and say, here's my resume. Are you hiring? <laughs> Would that be the best approach? No, one, I always like to watch people first. So with me, I like to, even if I'm on social media or anything, I'm following the people that inspire me to be great. So look at those people where it's like, okay, you inspire me to be great. I'm not trying to do what you do, but you inspire me to do something better and be more. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times you'll know and be able to see who you're following and try to reach out to them. So they might be doing mm -hmm. training classes. Love uh, it. And then even if sometimes, like I said, it might not be a paid job. It's just, hey, I've, I've reached out to people yeah. and said, hey, can I just pay to watch you and sit under yeah. you and, you know, walk how you shadow. from day to day and shadow. And a lot of people might not want you to do that right there in that state. So a lot of times I have to travel just to be able to work under somebody or just, yeah. you know, be yeah. mentoring with them or so. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, this would be good to know. How far did you travel to get your work experience? To get my work experience? Oh, I traveled all over. Most of the training for the beauty industry is not in Michigan. You know, so yeah, yeah. There, there's not beauty classes here. They were mostly Chicago, New York, um, mm -hmm. Florida. So I was yeah. always, I, I would hop on a bus <laughs> and go <laughs> I go there times I get on a plane and, and barely wow. have any money to take a class. If there was a yeah. class that I was interested in, I never said I don't have money. I tried to figure out how to get yeah, there. And okay. can. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I was always traveling for skincare and for beauty because nothing was here in Michigan for those beauty classes. Yeah. So you go to where the experts are at, yeah. um, you know, and, and, and once, once so you, <coughs> excuse me. So, mm -hmm. okay. So first step, go online like Instagram, Twitter, where, you know, Facebook, wherever the experts are at, follow them, almost like stalk them, right? You're like, oh yeah, what are they doing? What yeah. makes them different? What makes them so special? Yeah. Then step two is to have a conversation, right? Start mm -hmm. engaging, right? And then step three, say, hey, I'm willing to, to fly to you, or I'm willing to travel to you and let your family and friends know, bye. You know, I'm going, right? Now, how, how long did you go for? Did you go for a day, weekend, a week, a month? Most of them were weekends. Most were weekends. There were some day classes. There's times I hopped on the mega bus just to go to Chicago <laughs> for a day class. Nice, just to nice. learn whatever I could, get back on the bus and then come back, you know, to yeah. Michigan. So, yeah. so it just depends if it was a class or if somebody was mentoring me. Wow. Ah. That, yeah. That's dedication right there. Oh, oh, oh. That's yeah. all I cared about was Skinforia and what it was going to yeah. become and how much I can learn. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, all, like throughout your journey, so um, so Skinforia has been around for, was it three and a half, four yeah. years now? Mm -hmm. um, so, from, so did you start doing this before you started Skinforia or was it like year one, you also traveled while you had skin? you know, skin for your running. Everything was before. So I still mm -hmm. travel and try to learn it nonstop. Now yeah. my learning is more about business and numbers, yeah. and running the business. But before opening skin for, it was all beauty, skincare. Yeah. And that was years even before I started skin for you leading up to it. So yeah. love it, you know, and um, this is a good reference uh, for, for those that haven't read this book, it's called E-Myth. And they talk oh, about book. three parts, right? <laughs> the technician, the manager, the entrepreneur, right? Yeah. What's step one? What did Jesse just do? She mm -hmm. did the technician part. She mastered it, right? Mm -hmm. She knew everything about the technician. Now she's transitioned 
into more of manager and entrepreneurship now, right? So, exactly. so as you as you move forward into your entrepreneurial journey, right? This is step one. Look at how much homework that she did, right? That's Dedication. That, that that's. Right. I didn't want staff telling me what they need to do. I wanted to be able to educate them and let them know the right way on how to yeah. do it. So yeah, <laughs> that's that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so now, so after all your research, now you know you started a skin for now. How did you figure out like picking a location? <sighs> marketing uh you know uh, you know yes you're getting a blog out there so you had a small community right of people that were following you they're really interested but then you know how did you how did you how did you pick a spot right was that scary how, how, how was that experience yeah, that? So the spot that we chose was not what i thought i worked at a spa um at one of the casinos and i said okay this is the type of clientele that yeah. i would have and I looked up their zip codes and where everybody lived. And I said, this yep. is where I need to be. So yeah, I, yeah. I should be in that particular area for where I thought the clientele would be. And so I uh, hired a broker and I hired a broker and the broker was there to help me find those locations and negotiate contracts and do everything. But mm. what turned around was, um, and, I, and I'm grateful that I didn't pick the locations that nothing was working out. Every location I was picking out, something fell through with the contract. Mm. Um, but I thought who my clientele and market would be was totally different. You know, mm. now it's more millennials. And I thought it was going to be more older clientele. But now that I'm doing a beauty bar and sitting at a bar, the uh, my older clientele didn't want that. They wanted huh. me in a private room. I'll pay whatever to be in a private room. And it was more millennials saying, I'll sit at a bar. I'll pay $59. Yeah. Am I doing it out in the open? So yeah. um, it, Royal Oak just ended up working out with where we're at, but we did not pick Royal Oak. It was supposed to have been other places, but it just worked out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Royal Oak, I mean, it's a pretty popping city. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, love and, and rent is not cheap there either, right? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> rent is the worst. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how long did that experience take? Like going from place to place, trying to figure it out, just negotiating, you know contracts after contract i would say a total of around eight months but really in the nitty-gritty with everything probably three or four months maybe four months or so so like i had to stop start again stop yeah. think about it change the business plan and say okay i thought this was it but this is not and work around some numbers so it was a lot of back and forth yeah, yeah just to now, make sure right now during that during that time did you have clients uh, like at at another location temporarily or did you right. say okay, no clients until I actually have the brick and mortar? The only clients I had was at my home. So I was also yeah. taking clients at home uh, in a private little room that I had. Yeah. And I was having clients come and I was helping them with their skin. So I was still doing that on the side. Like, yeah, yeah. So this, yeah, you're making money. And this is a wonderful market research, right? You get to talk to your customers, clients and say, hey, I'm thinking about starting a place here, right? What yeah. do you think? And I got a lot of feedback where I'll right. tell them, okay, I'm looking at this location. Oh, that's this. And I was always getting feedback from the clients. But yeah, I was still doing facials at my home part time, other than working and being in school and all of that. So, wow. Yeah. yeah. Now, okay. So finally, you have the location open. What was it like the first, first week, first month, you know, first year of <laughs> your location? Was it, was you what, was it what you expected? No, no, not at all. It was a roller coaster ride. So of course, when you're opening and get the grand opening in the first week, you're you're happy and it's like, wow, yeah. I, I've accomplished everything that I dreamed of. <laughs> yeah, you're the highest of the roller coaster, right there. Yeah, I'm doing it. Wow, look at this place and this is what I've done. And then it starts to set in, like this is not easy. Well, where are the clients? I got to try yeah. to market, and you know the people you think that's coming, they're not there. You yeah, know, the expenses, so the bills don't stop. <laughs> Ah, and then it's okay now I'm paying everybody how do I pay myself so it was a roller coaster I would say the first year year and a half was hell it, it was hell it was to the point where I kept questioning why did I do this is this what yeah. I wanted to do this is everything I prayed for and this is not coming out how I thought it would be oh yeah yeah I remember yeah there there were days running my own business like I, I wouldn't even want to get out of bed it was that bad no. was like, oh, yeah. I, I don't want to get out of bed and and uh, this is a bad habit, but I started drinking more. I mean, I remember the first year and a half, I was like drinking every day. It was totally bad, bad. Okay, don't do this. All right. 
<laughs> Don't do this, kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's it's, frust- it's frustrating. It's and and also it's like you feel like. For me, it's like you lose control. You, you, you know, you don't like all your life work. If you work for someone, it feels like you have full control, right? You have a job. It's nine to five. It's, you set your schedule, right? But then, as an entrepreneur, it's like okay, whatever, you, whatever, anything goes. You know, it, you choose your path. Yeah. And just make sure you don't fall off the cliff, right? Yeah. So, and it's not about working hard. Everybody thinks to be an entrepreneur, you got to work hard. We all work hard. You know, you can work yeah. three, four jobs, but it's about trying to figure out what's not working and finding different avenues of how you can get more clientele in and how to become yeah. profitable. It's a nonstop journey. So, yeah, yeah. it was very stressful. It's very, it's, it's the things that people don't talk about. You don't talk about sleeping yeah. in and drinking and not want to get out of bed. We don't talk yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. 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 People think like, oh yeah. Oh wow. You're an entrepreneur. You get to set your own schedule. You get to, you get to party half the time. Yeah. No, 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 no. I wish. Yeah. No, actually yeah. we, we work more than eight hours a day. Yep, yeah. definitely. Least, it's not, your, your phone is always on and you always got to be on yep. call and ready for it. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I love it. So now let's, let's fast forward into away from hell. Right. Okay. So okay. after a year and a half, now we're into the year two, year you know, year two, year three. Yeah. Um, how's that been? The the you know the two year two and three. Much better because now I'm finding the flow of things. I realized I was doing a lot of stuff wrong. You know, <laughs> I was trying to be the one that did every did everything. You mm, know, I yeah. am. No, you one's gonna, right. <laughs> no one's gonna do it like I do it. No one cares yeah. as much as I care, and I have yeah. to. T- and see and do everything. And uh, yeah. once I got out of that habit and worked on trying to build a team, that's when things shifted and changed for me. So mm. it's been much better. Now I have more quality time with my family and yeah. I can see the business and I'm not working in the business every day. I'm working on it to try nice. to grow. Yeah. Nice. So so you start building the team, you're two, you're three. Now, how, how big is your team currently? Right now we have a staff of about 10, that's just the employees. And then yeah. when I was with the team, I'm talking about making sure you got the right attorney, the CFO, yeah. your marketing, social media. I hired somebody to do social media because I was doing everything. I'm doing yeah. the book, I'm doing social yeah. media, I'm doing everything. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, 10 employees and then just making sure I got people outside that be able to help me with everything. Yeah, I, I totally get it. Like, like for me, seeing that um, building a team is important, but your timing is just as important too. If you jump too far ahead and say, oh yeah, day one, I'm going to start building a team. But then if you don't know your business, how are you going to train your team? Exactly. Right? You so now you're, 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 you're spending all this money trying to build your team, but you can't really direct or, or delegate or train without yeah. that previous experience, right? It's like chicken or the egg, right? So you start from the beginning. It is a grind but you master this piece, but then you, you know, I've seen entrepreneurs that are stuck here too. They're not building a team and they don't expand. And now they're, they're just burned out. Cause and they're scared. They're scared to give away that control. They're scared that yeah. everything will fall apart. If they don't do it, but it's really yeah. honest the opposite. You can't grow. You can only yeah. do so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Now, uh, so how, how was that process of, of building your team, you know, ensuring that, all right, this is your expectations. I need you to meet that, right? How how did you do that? That's an ongoing, <laughs> that's an ongoing thing, an ongoing struggle. Mm-hmm. I think that is the hardest thing with the business. You know, it's not about the money or running certain stuff, it's yeah. getting the right people in the right position. So yeah, yeah, I have to work in each position first to see how to do it, what I liked, what I didn't like. And then <laughs> I looked and saw what was taking up the most time my most energy or things that I just wasn't great at and trying to find somebody that excels at that, that can not be a yes person. And I'm telling them everything, but can add value and say, just, I know a better way to do it. And I'd be open to listening to it, you know? So yeah, yeah, it's not stop with it. Just find the right people who want to grow whisking for you. So Mm. yeah. Yeah. Now, um, and that, that's, that's perfect, you know, and that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, now let's let's switch gears for a little bit. I we get a lot of this question from from our um, from our viewers and uh, other entrepreneurs is that how the heck do you market? Right, they're terrified. How do I get my business known? How 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 you know how do we get people to come to our storefront or buy our products? Like, how do you market? Right, what's working for you? What has not worked for you in the past three four years? Okay, so I'll be honest with you. I um, 
I thought me coming out saying I was the owner was going to hinder us. You know, so I said, I don't want to be the owner. I'm not telling anybody I'm the owner. I'm going to be the manager and think make people think it's a larger company than what it was. So we were doing well. But honestly, once I came out and became the face of the company, yeah. um, people started to say, wow, you look like me. You look like yeah. me. You're younger. Okay. You're older, You're African-American. You're And we started to get flooded with clients and they started to come from all uh -huh. over. So right now it's me showing that I'm the owner and being a face and then also doing videos. Now I started to do more videos. So a yeah. lot of now it's uh, live. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, well, a lot of it's uh, word of mouth. But now uh, when I am on Instagram, Facebook, anything and I do skincare tips, videos people look at me as the expert so now they're like oh my gosh you know your stuff let me come to you so we're doing yeah. a lot of videos a lot of stuff for social media and word of mouth and not being afraid to say hey i'm the owner these are my struggles and these are the things i yeah. can you know i deal with and people relate to me when when i talk about that and I'm open. yeah yeah what, what, what i'm hearing right from the get-go the transition is really being a hundred percent authentic you have right? to because people see through it when you're not yeah you know? yeah it's like oh yeah well he's just you know, or she just like trying to be someone that they're not really, yeah. uh, you know, really. And, and also it, it, it's stressful, you know, it's just like trying to, trying to put on a different, uh, you know, personality, you know, just be yourself, have fun. Right. I mean, yeah. it, running a business is tough enough already. So why, why even try to like, and also like, I, I see it, I see it from other entrepreneurs. I was one of them, you know, coming from the corporate world, right. Thinking, oh yeah, we got to be as big as possible. And, and, and highlight that but yeah. in reality it's like if you be yourself you're you're relatable right? yeah so and more like they, they yeah they feel like oh, okay you guys are relatable i you're like my sister you're like my friend and then they want yeah. to they want to support people that they like you know and that's yeah. yeah so things have changed on social media for us a lot with that yeah and would that be one of your differentiators at, at skinforia like you being you and how relatable you are compared to i mean there's there's a lot of you know other spas out there right there's there's big chains you know mm -hmm. of uh spas. so how would you differentiate yourself would this be one of the differentiators That's one but mostly one one of the things that i always say is education so you can go and get a facial anywhere and what i saw when i traveled was no one was educating me mm -hmm. it was like you get the facial and the experience and then i sell you products and you leave so yeah. one is education. No matter who comes into Skin Forward, we educate you. Um, myself and the staff, we always have educational points that we um, help you to accomplish whatever goes with your skin. So education and then not just selling products, making sure if your goal is dealing with fine lines and aging, I am educating you on the products and the ingredients. Mm -hmm. I'll never sell a product. I educate you on the ingredients and product and it sells uh, itself. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So, 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 so education, um, also the price point, I wanted to make sure it was inexpensive uh, to where you can come in more often and actually see a difference. So that meant changing the whole layout of the spa where you're not disrobing and changing clothes and sheets mm. and all of that. It is you no know, in, out, do what's the most important aspects of the facial within 30 minutes so I can make it affordable for people. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Now, we, we spoke a little bit offline about the products. No. Uh, from understanding you you create your own products yeah yeah right? yeah so tell us a little bit more on that like what was that process and at what point in the timeline of of building your business did you start looking into all right we need our own product line and why is that right i know there's mm -hmm. a <laughs> i just overloaded you with a bunch of questions no, you're, but, fine. Like, you're fine um the with the products you know what i've been researching and doing that since before the spa opened I didn't start selling my own line until probably year two. It took that long just to research ingredients and trial and error and making sure I have the right products and then seeing what my clientele really wanted. So I thought they wanted one thing and it was something different. So now I created an advocate and it was really taking one product at a time, one ingredient at a time, seeing what works, what doesn't. And I put it in full force after year two when I saw how much we were selling from other products and I'm like my my profit margins are way more with retail <laughs> and products this should be yeah. one of the main things and this is what changes people's skin without them even stepping foot into the spa so that's yeah. why I changed my thought process to say give my all into the products and making sure I have my line okay now what what um what is the what's your product line called 
Yep, it's called Revitalize You. So right now it's dealing with all the acne products. So it's a part of our 90 day acne boot camp. So uh, yeah, anybody dealing with acne, any type of breakouts or anything like that, we have customized kits. Everybody has different types of acne. So we customize a kit just for you. Oh, nice. Now, can can they buy the kit online or do they need to go into your brick and mortar? Oh, so right now we're going to the brick and mortar. We're in the process of changing things. It should be changed within the next 60 days. Oh, um, nice. because the reason why we did everything with the brick and mortar, it's a full consultation. I have to be able to see your face and ask you questions. You might think and answer some, you know, things certain way. But if I can see yeah. your skin and get certain questions and answers out of you, I can say, no, I know you've been to other places and they told you this stuff, but this is what's going on. Let me get these right products. So now we're just changing our website and changing everything online to be able to do that and customize it for them. Hmm, I don't okay. need you picking your products. I should be the expert to pick the products for you and explain yeah. why they work for you. Yeah, yeah, just like yeah. just like going to the doctors, right? Like you don't tell the doctor, "Hey, I want this medication, this medication, this medication." No, the doctor should be able to see what's wrong, yeah. right, or what I need help with, and then prescribe the right medication. We get that all the time. They'll come in and say, "I want the strongest chemical pill. I want like <laughs> oh, rip my face I off." <laughs> No, oh, this is not what you want. This is actually yeah. making it worse. So, yeah, and then I have to educate them why we have to do something different. And I have to turn people away. away. If it's not right for them, I'm not taking your money. I got to turn you away to make sure it's the right thing for you. Nice, nice. Yeah. I, lo I love what you're doing there. Now, um, the, uh, the, the product, uh, like building the product piece, if you don't mind kind of sharing, um, did, did you you know, work with a manufacturer, you know, a chemist kind of going through the whole process and then, yeah. and then modeling of it. How was that? Yeah. So I worked with the chemist and that was a lot of back and forth. They're out of California. So it was a lot of back and forth. I was trying to find one here. Um, cause yeah. I felt like I had to be able to see them and talk to them. So it was a lot of back and yeah. forth with California. And then once we worked on ingredients and the product with one, it was me testing it and then me taking that product and testing it with all certain friends that I know that would be yeah. honest. And yeah. um, once they tested it and I got feedback and made changes, then it was now the staff. We tested. Yeah. We take photos. <laughs> so a lot of stuff we would um, be using it and it's out there for six months before it even go on to the shelves, just making sure it's the right product. Yeah. 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 So now now you see you have the products and now is there a shelf life? On these products yeah so with these products that i have it's a shelf life of a year a year okay yeah. okay so yeah. you uh, so now you're also managing like supply chain now too oh, yeah. right the oh, different yeah. aspects of the business that you didn't really need to do before but now you're like okay we're incorporating more products that's becoming a big part of your business mm -hmm. and now you're you're learning different aspects right? yeah we're still a learning curve and it's constant. The good thing is once we get the products on the shelves, they sell out within seven to 14 days, maybe less than that. So now it's trying to make sure I'm working with cash flow to get enough products on the shelf to wear something there all the time when you're coming in. So yeah, we're selling out quick. Yeah. Nice. Well, nice. Yeah. So, okay. So the big question, but we pretty much touched on it and I have a feeling the, uh, I kind of know what you're going to say, but ultimately like from our title of our show, uh, for this episode, you know, for, for new beauty entrepreneurs going into skincare, what is the new approach to starting a new skincare business, right? What, what would you say that new approach should be if they're starting a new business today? You know what I, I would say also, um, you need to find how you can set yourself apart from everybody else. So with the skincare and beauty business, a lot of people want to be the jack of all trades. They want to do everything, right? I do hair, yeah. makeup, nails, lashes, and you don't <laughs> want to do that. You don't. You want to see um, how can you be different from everybody else and be the expert at something. And if yeah. it's something that everybody is doing, you're doing the wrong thing. You got to find a way to differentiate yourself from everybody else. So when they think of skin, they think of Jessica. So a lot of things I can do Lashes, yeah. I can do so much stuff, I'm certified, but I don't want to do all that. I want to be, when David thinks of skin and acne, he automatically thinks Jessica and Skinforia. Nice. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm trying to be the jack of all trades, hone in on one thing, and sometimes it takes a while. I didn't know I wanted to do acne. It is dibbling, dabbling different things, working under different people, and then saying, nope, that doesn't work for me. So figure out what you want to be an expert in, and then working under somebody, and then making sure you're known for that. Yeah. And and uh, I would like to add, like sometimes your customers kind of tell you where to go, right? Yeah, yeah. 
you're like, you're like, hey, I want to go this way, but the customer's like, no, 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 I'm not paying you to go that way. I'm paying you to go this way because that's, that's what it. I. That's it, David. We were not an acne clinic when we first opened. It was just Euphoria Facial Bar. And what happened was clients kept coming in and they would come in, give us five star reviews, but then didn't come back. And I'm like, what's going on? And a lot of them said, you already cleared my skin or they looked at us as this is a fun place to go. Um, mm. But most people that were coming in, they were dealing with acne. So we shifted after year two to say, okay, after a year and a half to say now it's acne. And that was from the client. That wasn't from me thinking, okay, I need to do acne. Yeah, yeah. Was there a big difference? Like, uh, as soon as you shifted that, huge, that huge. Within let right thirty days, maybe sixty days, we went wow. from we're busy and we're booked, but we're not profitable. To now, I am yeah. profitable, making money, and yeah. things changed overnight from listening to the clientele. So yeah, definitely. So okay, so last part now. Okay, okay. okay. Um, so we went. We we we. We started with, okay, present day, then we went back in time, and then we ba went back into present. Now, let's look into the future, right? Where do you see Skinforia going? You know, now we're in 2020, yeah. you know, for the next next four years, next five yeah. years. Yeah, so it's definitely growth. Um, I see, hopefully, more locations. We've grown out of our location in Royal Oak. Uh, we just had to do some more construction to be able to allow more seats and more clients <laughs> there. Um, and then more stuff that's online. I have so many people reach out to me on social media, especially Instagram saying, Hey, you're not, I'm not in Michigan, but how can you help me? So a lot of yeah, people yeah. online to where I can help virtually my, my clients and be able to clear their skin just from being on the phone and from the computer. So I want to be able to touch more people and not just here in Michigan. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So more locations getting, you know, getting on the internet a little bit more, right. Getting online now. Okay, thank you so much. Now, how can uh, our viewers, others reach you? Okay. Yep. So you can see everything. Right, right. We, okay. You can see everything for Skinforia. We have our website at skinforia.com, or you can go on Instagram and Facebook at Skinforia. S K I N P H O R E A. And then also for my social media, I do a lot of videos, entrepreneurial tips, behind the scenes, and I'm um, on Instagram at I am Jesse Hayes. Nice. Thank you so much. And all, all this information will be in the resources down in the show notes yeah. and on, on the page and YouTube. So no worries. If, if you can't find it, ping, ping, ping one of us, right? That's we'll take right. it. Right. All right. Uh, so uh, again, thank you so much for being on the show thank and you. For our viewers out there, you know, thank you for being part of this community. Hope this was very, very helpful for you. And, and again, Jessica, thank you for being so generous. Thank with you, David. Time. I appreciate you. All right. Take care. Yeah. See you, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye.